finally is the moment to talk about your first week of owning a Rottweiler. Hi guys, welcome back to yet another episode. In today's video we're gonna talk about the first week of owning a Rottweiler from the moment I picked her up to the end of the first week. Also, thank you so much for the comment in the previous video, I've been reading all of them and I do really appreciate it. I uh, try to reply to everyone. If someone wanna follow us, here is Ivy the Roth. We are on Instagram, you can shout a message. I've been able to help so many people of you guys already and I'm looking forward to help many more. Uh, so thank you so much. So first of all, Ivy was born the 2nd of February and I picked her up the 29th, the 29th of March. So at exactly eight weeks of age. Here I'm gonna leave you the spreadsheet of the weight of Ivy's litter so you guys can have a rough idea of what's the weight of a Rottweiler puppy at eight weeks of age is also show how uh, was the weight was when they're born and all the litter between male and female and I think you know it's very indicative like it's not like this for every Rottweiler of course this is just Ivy's litter but it gives you a rough idea of you know more or less what's the weight could be and what to expect so before we start a short list of things that you need before your puppy arrives to home so what i suggest to have the first thing is food so food you will talk to your breeder see what she or he feeds uh, the puppy and you will go from you know you will out of the diet that the breeder does so it's important to have the same food that the breeder has been given to the puppy secondly is bowl so for water and food of course uh stainless steel uh, the best one easy to wash they don't get rusty nothing they just last long and also of course because they're just puppy and this type of dog will grow it will grow very fast they won't stay small for very long so don't waste too much money uh, at the beginning because they will eventually grow out and everything so um try to be on a budget still buying good stuff but you know don't go over the top because it's just money that you're gonna waste so balls i just start with some small ball um of course at eight weeks of age you know there is no point in buying a full large extra large bowl for food and, and water because they you know they were probably not even able to reach it so uh got something smaller very cheap kmart or whatever um is the way to go then you're gonna buy a collar um ivis was uh, a medium and i tied it up at the shortest version and it was fitting her and a little leash of course here as well don't spend too much money they will probably grab the the, the collar within a month's time so just be on a budget on that as well then it's very important to have a bed and a crate if you want a crate trainer i suggest to do so otherwise just a bed is fine crate wise you can either buy a smaller one and then upgrade to the biggest one later on as i did uh, just because i didn't want to really divide uh, a larger one so i bought a medium large one to begin with and then i upgraded to a full large one so when they're fully grown as well the size will be 42 or 48 up to you 48 is the is a huge crate um if you have a garden probably is the best one 42 is just gonna be just enough so go with that a set of toys you can find them on amazon very cheap try to get a set with some different toys maybe different texture different size different squeegee and squeegee you know just keep them entertained as much as you can pair of treats so treats are gonna be very important for the training so get something that is a very high quality and as i suggest is divide the treats in two so normal treats and a very high uh, rewarding treats after that we're gonna need some puppy pads uh if you want to use them or not i used to have them some inside not particularly fussy about it but just in case it's good to have them i didn't want the dog to get used too much uh, of the puppy pads so that was just for emergency or maybe some night time so to cover the crates the bottom of the crates and then last thing last thing but not least important is patience you guys are gonna need a lot of patience uh puppy are incredibly cute but they are incredibly a pain in the beep so it's to be patient and consistency is gonna be the key for your puppy with that being said small introduction this video will just gonna cover the first week how it went and i won't cover the training i've done for the training i've done i will do a special video um, which i will tell you exactly how i did follow the perfect puppy course that we'll create uh step by step from day one until you know until now so we're gonna do a nice uh, breakdown video of the training that we've been following so when it was time to go and pick up the puppy the breeder is around an hour and a half to two hours driving from my house so not extremely long um, the things I carried with me was some nice fresh water um, some puppy pads just for the car to cover the, the floor of the car if you want to put it on a crate or put him in a crate you can bring a crate and put it in the trunk I personally kept it in, in between my legs as probably most of the people do try to cuddling and you know 
it's just what you want to do is just squeeze and cuddling um, some paper towels because most likely they're gonna vomit in the car I did so I have some paper towels to try and clean up it's gonna be very important and of course last but not least the color uh, to just fill it on straight away once you pick it up then once, once you arrive to the breeder um, of course we sign all the papers they gave us the pedigree and everything all the paperwork was done and we carry in the car drove back to to my house Ivy was super sweet she slept the whole time she vomited once but apart from that she slept all time and and yet yeah, so she was very 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 good can't complain at all uh, once we get at home I was facing the first step which was the introduction with my cats if you guys don't know I have two cats uh, they are all cats and uh, of course it wasn't my first time introducing a dog and cats together I always recommend that either one of the two is a either a puppy or a kitten when you have one of the two is a puppy that you have two way you either uh, do the slow way which is uh, smelling introduction you keep them separate you just allow them in the next few days to smell each other through doors and you know don't put them in contact just yet and kind of get used to each other by smell the other in the other approach is the direct one so dog and cats together as soon as you get home and hope for the best I personally did the second so as soon as we got home I put Ivy down on the floor in the living room the cats were there of course they were curious to see what was going on and as soon as I see the dog um, there was not much of a reaction from them they were kind of curious they didn't know what really what was so they kind of got close they smell it and then they just disappeared and it's been like this for the the following week so for a week time cat and dog they just completely ignore each other there was some small contact uh, where the, maybe cats were trying to go to the dog or the dog was trying to go uh, to the cats but nothing much happening um, especially with the fem my female cat she's a very dominant cat she's been following shadow me for the past four years so uh, my biggest worries was for her um, because uh, we are a very deep bond with each other and I knew that probably she would have been the one to take it a bit more rough uh, the introduction of a new animals and someone that could stay with me um, is you now spreading my time with her as well so but luckily she just completely ignored her as long as the dog stay away from her it's completely fine I will learn to you know learn boundaries and you know it's all fine so that was first thing first was done uh, as well we took her a bath because the breeder didn't wash it on purpose as she was keeping them outside the puppy and they were just covered in, in sand and and soil and everything so uh, she gave us a proper shampoo um, to bath her and so as soon as we got home we gave her a nice bath like it was a nice weather and uh, we just take her outside have a little play and of course the first day is gonna be a huge massive change from your puppy uh, I didn't want to put through anything the first day she of course left the litter she left the family she left the place where she she was and you know to move in a house where she never been with people that she never seen uh, it's gonna be quite of a, a change so you don't want to put any pressure on this It's already quite of a change for her so after that we just designate an area with her uh, where to keep her which was uh, in the kitchen where there is the tiles and some puppy pads on the floor the area was closed and so you know you have control over what everything is happening and and we just stay in there playing with toys and you know just enjoy your new puppy because that's what she's gonna do is just enjoy your puppy after that was time for a dinner time Ivy the first week didn't have any appetite at all uh, is actually pretty common she had you know a massive change and that's be the only week that she didn't have appetites because after that she is a vacuum so <laughs> in fact of violet you need to be careful because they have a tendency of obesity just because they could eat all day long without with no stop so it's important to keep it on a right diet but yeah the first week she wasn't very fussy with food um so i just let her be if she want to eat that's fine if she didn't want to eat you know it's gonna be for the next meal then we go to night time personally I would suggest you to uh, create trainers straight away so let her sleep at night either with you in the bedroom uh, in the crates or in an area of your house that you want her to sleep um, luckily for me Ivy didn't cry at all um, from the beginning she was just very nice I, I didn't put her on a crate I just left her in the room rooming and be able to sleep on her bed which is probably not the best thing to do but I didn't wanna uh, I didn't wanna ever on a crate at night it was just my personal decision and I just took the chance because when you 
don't do that you don't control the environment you just take a chance that you know she could wee everywhere or she could chew anything um, I personally took the chance and it worked out fine for me uh, I could not I, it could not be better to be honest so um, but you guys maybe you know it's up to you decide what to do I personally suggest and recommend to use a crate and knife so she gets used to, to, to straight away uh, I didn't because I didn't want to crate train her at night and I didn't want her to live on a crate at night um, as I said, probably it's not the best approach, but it's what worked out for me and I'm just transparent and telling you how I did. Uh, I did put an alarm every two hours and of course to take her downstairs, start the, pot the potty training straight away. Um, the Rottweiler, they are very, very smart. They won't take long to understand what they need to do. Of course, some accident will happen in the house here and there when you might misread some sign and you don't understand that she actually need to go or you don't see, uh, you know, some accident will happen, but you know, that's fair enough. Within the first within the first week um, she was actually quite understanding that uh, outside was the area where I wanted to you know we do, do, do her own thing and she basically almost never did anything inside so I've been very lucky some of the siblings of Ivy uh, took a bit longer uh, eventually you know with consistency and patience they will understand that as long as you you are responsible and you set an alarm every two hours uh, before they eat after they eat after they drink, when they wake up, before playtime, after playtime, it's every chance to take them outside, praise them when they do the right things where you want, and it won't take long. In terms of destroy this destructiveness, in terms of destructiveness, uh, here as well, I've been quite lucky. I it wasn't destructive at all. She wasn't really interested in chew, like pillow, or shoes, or anything. Um, probably the leg of the table was, was like was her thing, uh, but we you know quickly fix and correct her um, you know show her that that was not acceptable and instead you know replace with something that okay you can have these toys instead um, with a few takes she, she understood and she, you know she really wasn't much interested in the leg to be honest anymore and since then she never had any any issues in this house whatsoever I know I've been particularly lucky um, my May Rottweiler back in Italy uh, was very destructive was super nippy and it took a while for him to stop destructiveness and to stop nipping because it was absolutely terrible so I think here as well comes down to the single puppy uh, I personally go lucky probably if I get another Rottweiler I won't be lucky so here is a 50-50 chance to be honest as long as though you know how to correct and fix this behavior it won't last long because as I said Rottweiler are very smart they kind of understand pretty soon how to how the things are and as long as you show leadership you're consistent and you have patience you know everything goes gonna go smooth but it's very important for you to be patient the puppy really gonna test your limit and when it comes to patience because whew, you know after the first week you actually start to realize there are little devils going around your house and that's where you know you need to keep your nerves cold and just be consistent and just understand that this will be a phase and it will eventually go so yeah this was our first week uh, how the introduction with the cat went how the, the whole new home situation was and and that was exactly what happened so thank you so much guys for watching this video as well if you haven't yet you know you can subscribe to the channel follow us on IB the Broad on Instagram shout some messages if you want um, if you would like as well go please if you haven't yet see the previous videos that we have done uh, super cool things Ivy with his brother and male with the female so yeah this was our first week and yeah thank you so much guys for following you see you next time thank you